Over 200 years ago, there was a revolution, an American revolution, an event that literally changed the course of history. It was led by a group of unsatisfied people, people who were tired of being told what they could do and when they could do it. People were fed up with their lack of choices and their person, lack of personal freedoms. People fed up with their lives being controlled by others, fed up with being oppressed, fed up with being manipulated. They finally said, enough, I've had it, and I'm not going to live like this anymore. Our, answer, our ancestors were people that took full responsibility for what happened to them. It was that spirit that ignited a country and formed what is now a giant in the free world. I have a question for you. Where is that spirit today? It's time for another revolution. <clears throat> Let me explain one of the laws of the universe. It's called the law of use. And it says simply this, whatever you don't use, you lose. Lack of use causes loss. Ambition unused declines. Faith unused decreases. If you don't use your skills, you lose your skills. If you don't use your freedom, you lose your freedom. Freedom does not come automatically. It's not attained and then handed down to us as an inheritance. It must be achieved each day. At the turn of the century, in the year 1900, less than 10% of us worked for other people or the government. Over 90% of us were self-employed. We were an independent people. In 1980, only 80 years later, over 90% of us worked for the other people or the government. Less than 10% of us were self-employed. We changed from an independent people to a dependent people. We'd slowly shifted from a people who took full responsibility for everything that happened to them to a people who'd become talented and practiced at the art of blaming others for their problems. Our giant has fallen asleep. Our forefathers didn't say, who's going to take care of me? They simply said, all I ask is the opportunity to be free and the ability to take care of myself and my family. Today, we elect officials who will quote unquote, take care of us. We cry out against anyone who dares to ask us to provide more value in the workplace. We do everything we can to spread around the suffering in our society, and yet no one is willing to step up and be part of the solution. We've slowly changed from a society that compensates based on value to a society that compensates based on entitlement and seniority. What we've come to believe is our due. We act as if someone actually owes us a living. Part of this change is due to the dramatic rise of conformity in our society. We're all taught to conform. Incredible pressures are put on us every day to do things, quote unquote, the right way. And yet no one asks the question, is this really the right way? A man once said, I'm just a collection of mirrors reflecting what everyone expects of me. We live our lives to please those around us, and the scary thing is, the people around us are doing exactly the same thing. Psychologist Rollo May calls us outer-directed people. We don't act, we only react. We seek not to be outstanding, but to fit in. We're able to respond, but not to choose. Perhaps that's why a wise man once said, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. In order to change, we need to become interdirected people. People with our own purpose. People who are not easily swayed by the opinions of others. And that's difficult because from a very early age, we look to the opinions of others to orient ourselves and to validate our decisions and our actions. Nietzsche said, we need more strong people in this world because the weak, by their sheer mass, are forcing weak ideals and weak values on us all. Today's massive social and economic changes are waking this slumbering giant. Some people may not be ready right now for the changes happening today in today's society. It doesn't matter if they're ready or not. An old proverb says, if a man wants his dreams to come true, he must first wake up. <laughs> I 
I, for one, am glad for the radical changes in our society because I believe that within that crisis, we will find that independent spirit that once pioneered this country. Some of us are finally ready to change. The displacement of our workforce has caused many of us to start searching for something better. Moving products and moving services is our business and our goal, but what we are becoming in the pursuit of that goal is a larger and much more important issue. The rekindling of our independent spirit has more lasting value. There's no more noble a business than the business that encourages the development of people. Every living organism has one and only one central need in life, to fulfill its own potentialities. The acorn becomes an oak, the puppy becomes a dog, and that's all that's required of the oak and the dog. But the human being's task in fulfilling his or her nature is much more difficult. The reason is, unlike any other living creature on this planet, you've been given the dignity of choice. You'll not grow like a tree. You'll grow only as you plan and choose to grow. When a person chooses to live, two things happen. First, assuming responsibility for themselves takes on a whole new meaning. They accept responsibility not as something they've been saddled with, but as something they themselves have chosen. The second thing that happens is that discipline from the outside is replaced by self-discipline. They accept discipline not because it's commanded, because they themselves have chosen what they want to do with their lives. Just like when the disenfranchised, disenfranchised men and women over 200 years ago got fed up and said, I'm not going to live like this one more day, there's another, there's another revolution coming. It's coming not just from Americans, but from people all over the world. It's coming from people who've been oppressed in meaningless jobs, from people who've been unjustly held back from people who've been slighted or ignored, from people who've had their hopes crushed time and time again by the circumstances around them, from people who've been playing in a game where the rules weren't the same for everyone, from people whose dreams have almost died by the methodical dripping of negative and pessimistic forces, people who've just been waiting for the right opportunity to present itself, an opportunity that they could hold on to, believe in, a place where people believed in them. I hear the rumbling of this coming revolution every day. The old, the old rules are changing, and society is finally ready for that change. Will people try to persuade you not to rise up? Yes, they will, and sometimes with the best of intentions. But we must fight anyone or anything that tries to influence us against our freedom. And they'll try. Believe me, they'll try. They'll try to suggest you off course, to nudge you off course, to distract you off course. There's another revolution coming, and it's going to be led by a group of unique and courageous people like you. People who've had it with the way things are. People who've picked out their mountain in life and said, I'm going to the top. And if someone tells you, you can't climb mountains, you don't have any experience. You tell them, I'm going to the top. And if your neighbor tells you, come on, choose another mountain, that one's too rocky, what are you going to tell them? And if someone tells you, let's go over here where it's not so steep, what are you going to tell them? And if someone says network marketing, what are you going to tell them? And if your friend tells you, come on, let's climb this one, that one's too slippery, what are you going to tell them? If anyone tells you you can't go up, it's too rocky, too steep, too slippery, you say, listen here, I'm going up. You're either going to see me waving from the top or dead on the side. I'm not coming back. something about the do-or-die attitude. It's almost like when someone has a do-or-die attitude, time, fate, and circumstances seem to get together, have a hasty conference, and say, they say they're going to do it or die. We might as well let them have it. The 
people in this arena are special. You're special because you've already rekindled that independent spirit. You've already said that you're not going to conform to negative pressures around you. You've all said enough, I've had it, and I'm not living like this anymore. You are the people who want to set big goals and aspira aspirations for yourselves and your families. People who want to live in a country where families are brought together again instead of being torn apart. People who want a country where once again owning your own business and controlling your own destiny is commonplace. People who want a country where every man, woman, and child is treated with equal respect and dignity. People who will pay any price so their families will not live with the legacy of maxed out credit cards and unfulfilled promises. Today, we stand at the genesis of a new revolution, and people like you are going to lead it. Theodore Roosevelt said these words decades ago, and I think they're particularly appropriate today. He said, we see across the dangers of the great future, and we rejoice as a giant refreshed. The great victories are yet to be won. The greatest deeds yet to be done. I've dreamt of a company that can give us the opportunity to make these dreams come true by allowing us all to fulfill our own true potential. I love you all, thank you very much.